dust storm playing out in front of your eyes, also known as Haboob, blowing through Arizona on Monday, transforming the sky into that apocalyptic sepia color. This video out of Maricopa, Arizona, as that towering wall of dust took over a residential neighborhood, you can see the trees swaying and the wind you could even hear. The storm also caused quite a bit of chaos at Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, where several flights had to be diverted. We got another vantage point, too, because it was quite a dust storm that we saw play out. This is outside of Tempe. Footage taken at Mountain America Stadium at Arizona State University, showing the stadium quite literally getting swallowed by dust. Uh, the lights came on because it got dark. It looks like they were already on, but that visibility did drop to near zero. Winds also gusting upwards of 60 miles an hour. Joining us now from Arizona State University is Randy Cerveni, a meteorology professor from the university, from Arizona State. Uh, happy to have you with us this morning. I think this is truly the most captivating video that we've been able to show everybody this morning. Yep. And, and not a lot of people that have actually lived through one themselves. Uh, for, let's, I guess, start with the basics. <laughs> with for, for you guys in Arizona, out of the Phoenix area, especially, how how often do you typically see one like this, this massive? Um, actually, these are fairly frequent. A couple years ago, you showed that nice video of, uh, of ASU uh, football stadium. A couple years ago, we had a similar type of dust storm come through during a football game. And the football game actually had to be uh, postponed for a couple hours uh, while the dust storm actually went through. So these things do happen. Uh, they are always visual monsters and uh, very, very impressive to see. Now, Randy, the magnitude of this uh, maybe seems like a lot from my perspective. I'm wondering, as we had damage reports at the airport, a 60 mile per hour wind gust at Sky Harbor, 66 mm -hmm. in, I think it was outside of Mesa, mm -hmm. Arizona. But nonetheless, those are technically severe wind gusts. It, does the, the magnitude of the wind that you see that stirs up one of these uh, uh, haboobs, does that happen frequently or was that a bit uncommon? I know it's as a result of storms, right? Like we get these dust storms because of actually storms growing in the atmosphere. Right. The storm itself actually uh, first developed down by Tucson and took an hour and a half actually to work its way towards the Phoenix metropolitan area. So uh, kind of think of these these dust storms as these haboobs as uh, giant push brooms that are the outflow from a, th a decaying thunderstorm that happens quite a ways away from Phoenix. And that uh, outflow acts like a push broom and pushes the dust right into the Phoenix metropolitan area. The winds on this thing were strong. Uh, at, the, uh, at Sky Harbor Airport, they were actually up to 70 miles an hour. Mm. And what fortunately that actually did was to cause the storm to move through very quickly. So the effects of it were not as severe as some of the other major uh, dust storms that we've had in the last 10 or 15 years. It moved so quickly. So yes, the winds played a role, but to our, to our advantage, uh, that pushed the dust through the valley uh, of the sun here very quickly. About how fast would you say in terms of how long this one lasted uh, compared to what they usually would? Well, this one actually passed through the, the Phoenix area probably over the course of an hour and a half. Okay. Uh, some of them, some of the, the big ones that we've had over the last 15, 20 years uh, have taken as much as four to five hours to make it clear through the entire valley. And the dust just kind of hangs over the valley for that particular period of time. So this was a very fast moving uh, dust storm. We've come up with a new scale that we're trying this year for all the meteorologists in the, in the Phoenix metropolitan area. And we rank dust storms now on a scale from one to five. Uh, and our preliminary ranking for this particular dust storm was a category two. Hmm. Wow. It is interesting. That is that yeah. because you you look at the visuals, right? And mm -hmm. this thing looks apocalyptic. But yeah. when, when you when you base it off of the the factors that you guys consider, um, not the strongest, but but certainly one that that made its rounds on social media. Before we let you go, dust doesn't always get mm -hmm. followed by rain, right? More times than not, you get the dust, and well, good luck trying to get it all cleaned off. But that you can sometimes get the rain behind the dust. Yes. And in fact, in this particular case, the rain followed so closely with the dust that for some areas for a short period of time, we were actually having mud rain. The, uh, the dust was interacting with the, uh, the rain to the point that it was 
falling mud. Ugh. And uh, so I have a feeling the Phoenix car washes today are going to be very, very busy. <laughs> <laughs> I would yeah. imagine so. Uh, yeah. I actually have one bonus Go question. Go for it. Why aren't you at Burning Man? Because <laughs> <laughs> everyone was there, yeah. and that dust storm that we saw over the weekend, <laughs> quite impressive, too. Yeah. It's wild. Wild out west. And we are going to have more of these coming in the next uh, few weeks. We're, our monsoon season doesn't end until the end of July. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and yesterday was a very active day for the monsoon, especially yeah, when was. you looked at some of the rain totals in Arizona. Um, okay, well, Burning Man would give you an upfront seat. I'm telling you. To a lot of that action, but, um, but it ends on Monday, so next year. Fascinating stuff. Yeah, really appreciate it. Randy uh, Cervini, meteorology yeah. professor at, at ASU, thanks for your time. My pleasure.